coming up on Time for Hope. I believed the lie. So 19 years old, I was a nursing college student, and I really met this man of my dreams and believed the manipulation and lies that I was fed. Join Dr. Frida Cruz, licensed professional counselor, and her guests as they provide practical solutions to real life problems on Time for Hope. You have just tuned in to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and I do appreciate our faithful and regular viewers and hope that many new ones are joining us and will soon be regulars also. I am joined today by author, president, and CEO of a U.S.-based communications corporation, Jeanette Town. And what a story she shares in her book titled, From Prisoner to President. In her book, Jeanette provides an inside view of domestic violence and abuse from her own true story. By God's grace, Jeanette's story has a happy ending. Stay with us. And Jeanette, it's great having you on Time for Hope. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Fried. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, you coming, giving us your time, and, um, and then hearing your story. Our viewers mm -hmm. are really going to be captivated mm -hmm. by your story. I was captivated by your story as I read it. And I'm, I'm really uh, glad that someone has put into a book form from, as I've already said, an inside view of what goes on in a, an abusive relationship and you didn't leave uh, any details out which I think can will be able to help so many women and you look great you don't look like you ever suffered a, a time of violence in a relationship at all no I, I have been completed and restored uh, by Jesus but nobody goes through what I went through without having scars you know I've said that they do heal over time, but the scars are remain, you know, it's a reminder of what you went through and what you have experienced in your life. You know but, what people, someone has said, someone said it on my show actually, they had been in a, an abusive relationship. Scars are tough. Mm, yes, they, they are. You know, when they heal, they're tough. Yes, so, uh, they are. They, they, as long as it's not an open wound that mm -hmm. continues uh, to fester, but uh, we'd rather have the tough scars. Right, but you know, with um, writing this story, Dr. Frida, um, I, I have the perfect life. I am restored, I am a believer, I've got an active ministry, I'm running a corporation, I have a, a wonderful and healthy marriage to a wonderful man and, and four miracle children. Why would I risk at this point in my life bearing all? And there's only two reasons. Uh, one, I'm completely insane, or two, I clearly heard from God in becoming transparent and sharing my journey. And I had a vision of writing a book of the president, who I am today. That really doesn't speak to the person who is in this abuse or the person who would like to get out of it or has gotten out of it. So I wrote this from the beginning and showed the spiral of this, you know, domestic situation and what goes on inside the four walls of a person's home. You know, what, what uh, was amazing to me is you didn't fit the profile. Uh, you came from a, a wonderful mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. environment and I really have such admiration from, for your father in reading the book mm -hmm. and knowing how he came uh, through for you. Yes. And um, so I want to know right off, and I'm going to ask right off, how in the world did you end up in this relationship to start with? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really good question. I believed the lie. So 19 years old, I was a nursing college student. I was working as a waitress, and I really met this man of my dreams and believed the manipulation and lies that I was fed. If you don't have anybody that's ever lied to you, Dr. Frida, it's very hard to see when somebody is lying to you. So I fell for it. I was in the perfect storm, taken away and away from my family and then pretty much cut off from anybody that I knew. So I had no family or friends close to me at all. 
timing had something to do with it, didn't it? Oh, with your parents absolutely. leaving and you uh, being alone and probably might never have come in contact with such a person. Uh, he, it, the ca charisma that mm. these guys have mm -hmm. is uh, amazing mm. that they can be two or three people and, uh, he, and, and I'm sure he came across to a 19 year old with all of that and you were as you thought, as you said in your book, you thought you had found your Prince Charming. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He was mesmerizing. He was just captivating. And I had met boys in high school, you know, and they were the guys they you, didn't measure up, though, you went did to proms they? with and you hung out with and you ate French fries with. They weren't men. Mm -hmm. And I was just captivated and certain that this was the man I was going to build a life with, have family with, and I saw the picket fence and the perfect life. He swept you off your feet. Oh, yes. Now, how long after you were, and you were married quickly, right? Yes, how long him. had you known him? I knew him actually about a year, mm -hmm. and uh, then I married him. I eloped, actually. There was no white wedding. There was no, you know, you my just, daddy giving me away mm -hmm. and walking down the aisle, and we just went off and filed a piece of paper, and then I was, I moved my whole life uh, around this man and raising, we had, he has a daughter, so I became an instant mom to a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. Now, how soon after you were married did he uh, st start the violence or the abuse? It was actually just a, a couple of months after being married. So one of the first episodes of abuse, I questioned him after seeing him get into a car with a, a woman, and I thought I saw him kiss her outside of my home. And that night, he, um, he tormented me by pouring five gallons of water on top of me while I was not allowed to leave my chair. Five so, gallons mm -hmm, of water like on top of you because you didn't want him with another woman? Because um, I questioned him about seeing somebody, yeah. Hmm. So that's, kind of, that's how it all started? Yes, it did, doctor. Yeah. I, as I say, I've no, I've known about abuse and and so forth, but I've never quite read. Uh, I've never read a story uh, like this one. So you were very brave uh, to to write it and even tell these things. And then you were very brave to stay. And we want to talk about that when we come back. And it is time for a break. If we think about abuse as being mistreatment, uh, it would be considering uh, how, how do you verbally talk to another person or how is someone talking to you? For example, if there's belittling, if there's shaming, uh, if there is name calling, these are examples of verbal abuse. Whereas emotional abuse, abuse may not be verbal, it could be well, using the silent treatment. Again, I say thank you for joining us on Time for Hope. Our guest is Jeanette Town. We're talking about her book, From Prisoner to President. But as always, I want to share something from a viewer, and then I'm going to turn back to our guest to help me uh, with this particular prayer request. Dear Dr. Frieda, I have been in a difficult marriage for 35 years. I have suffered through my husband's emotional and verbal abuse and infidelity. My husband made a profession of faith and we have been to counseling, but nothing has brought any change. Please pray that I would have God's wisdom to decide what to do next. And of course that is where I would say is ground zero to start with prayer. And we have, uh, we have joined you in praying about this situation. We do it with each and every prayer request that comes in to Time for Hope. And if you haven't shared yours, we encourage you to do so. Again, as always, I encourage you to visit our website, great resources there and we're going to be adding Jeanette's book to that resource list. Now Jeanette this is a very common story. She's been in it for 35 years and 
she mentions her husband's emotional, which could be psychological and verbal abuse and infidelity, that he hasn't, uh, he hasn't used the physical honor that you went through in your t 10 years, I believe, of marriage. But um, this, the emotional, psychological, verbal abuse can be worse even than the physical. As you have said, I believe, in your book, physical sometimes will heal. Now, there, it can be bad enough physically you don't heal uh, or, you know, even comes mm -hmm. to death and so forth. But long-term psychological, verbal abuse uh, is very devastating. It will cause physical illness. Oh, it will cause uh, one to lose a sense of themselves. Um, all kinds of things happen with this. Apparently, she's still in the relationship. Another thing I want to ask you, I personally see infidelity as abuse. Oh, absolutely. I think it could be uh, named right along with the physical and the verbal oh, abuse. Uh, I mean, how much w w how much worse could it be than uh, being unfaithful or having yes. affairs or the infidelity in a marriage? And yet, she has stayed. Bec uh, probably some of this leads to the fact he's made a profession of faith. Uh, when we do not know. And he's going to counseling with her, so she finds that encouraging, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, he's so. giving her just enough uh, to keep her hoping. Right. And they and, always will, Dr. Frieda. You know, you said a couple of things, and I, my heart goes out to this viewer, first of all. And I do pray. I'm, I'm a prayer warrior, and I pray for the many women that I know have gone through these, you know, situations or are still in them. And the, the number of years, she's expecting him to change, but he won't. And, and the other thing, a, a lot of women staying with men for the number of years, it's encouraged by the family or by the faith. I was raised in a home, as you mentioned. Children even. Ch children involved with it. People did not get divorced. It was a you know, something that was forbidden, and I was raised a Catholic. So my parents drilled into us, thick or thin, better or worse. Nobody, God does not want His women to be staying in relationships where there is abuse. And that verbal, you mentioned the verbal abuse, it's by far worse. Long after my physical abuse memories faded, and you know, I had the worst possible situation, rape, knives, guns. I had all of that. You know, I was hospitalized. Um, but that, that verbal abuse, you hear it, and you hear that negative talk in your head for years after you leave the relationship. And you also mentioned the affair. How much more rejection can you have in a relationship when the most intimate thing that God made for a couple to share together in matrimony and that intimacy is broken, where the man goes off and rejects you, and not only abuses you, but goes for somebody else. Plus the, the risk of bringing home mm -hmm. to you what you experience, the sexually transmitted mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. um, and we don't know if that has happened. She didn't mention mm -hmm. that that has happened to her, but it's a miracle if it hasn't, if he has yes. uh, regularly uh, being unfaithful to her, and it did happen to you. It did, absolutely. Um, at first I didn't know, because there aren't a lot of symptoms, as many women know, but over the years I was uh, given transmitted diseases so many times that it left me barren um, at the end of the relationship, unable to um, conceive a child. And in a lot of pain and very um, near death. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I almost lost uh, my life you uh, in the process. almost lost your life, uh, but thankfully, as I've already said, the end of your story, uh, you have a happy ending, and we want to come back and hear more about that. And it is time for a break, and we'll be right back. To get a copy of today's book, please log on to our website at timeforhope.org and click the Order Resources icon. How a local newspaper related how he had stalked her for weeks after the relationship had gone sour. As she made her way into the barn to feed her horses, he was waiting for her. 
Her ex-lover tied her up, beat her, and then shot and killed her. In our country alone, there are an estimated four to six million incidents of domestic violence against women every year. In fact, one third of female homicide victims are killed by husbands or boyfriends. And a study among Texas high school students revealed 35% had experienced various levels of violence in their dating relationships. Many myths prevail regarding why women allow themselves to be abused by their husbands or boyfriends. For sure, it isn't true that they desire or have a deep inner need to be abused. It can be true that they have come from homes where violence and abuse were the norm and they have not learned that it is very abnormal behavior. Perhaps it is the desire to be loved, and sometimes at any cost, because their love tanks have been empty all their lives. Most women who remain in abusive relationships, for whatever reason, feel and believe that there is no way out. Some even believe that they deserve the abuse. To break free, women must be able to identify abuse. It is not only being beaten physically. Abuse includes verbal, emotional, sexual, and other versions of a spouse's power and control that robs you of your personhood. Women, abusive relationships are abnormal, unhealthy, and dangerous. Let me encourage all women to confront the lie that your destiny includes being a victim of life and love and instead accept the truth that you don't have to remain in an abusive relationship. There is help available. However, the risk of fatal harm from the abuser is greatest at the time that you choose to leave and end the relationship. Since this is true, you will need direction and help and a safe place to go. Check out your local area for shelters for battered women. They will guide and help you. If one is not available, find a mental health facility where tra trained counselors are available. Maybe the abuse started out as verbal but is escalating to the physical. Now is the time to act and ask God to give you the courage to do what you have to do to find the freedom that can be yours. Thank you for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest is Jeanette Town. We're talking about her book, From Prisoner to President. And you know, Jeanette, I see in reading your story that you indeed were a prisoner. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it so reminds me of having been kidnapped mm -hmm. and then programmed until you didn't see a way out or you didn't see any hope apparently mm -hmm. that things were, you didn't hope he was gonna get better. You, are, you mm -hmm. knew at some point mm -hmm. he was not gonna change, right? right? And we wanna right. tell these women that are hoping out there mm -hmm. that as a general rule, they don't change. It takes a miracle of God to change this kind of man, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think and it's, it does happen. We don't want to uh, say that it doesn't. But to stay around waiting on that to happen when no, there's nothing to go on and he does the same thing over and over and over. He does the either the verbal abuse, uh, which is sometimes a constant day after day thing, like a dripping, away, a dripping. Uh, or there are the times it builds, uh, the cycle builds, and then the physical mm -hmm. abuse. And even with verbal, it builds also to, to a point. Um, and, but it, there's the honeymoon stage very often after that, mm -hmm. where the flowers mm -hmm. pour in and uh, the dozen roses 
bruises and and we're I'm gonna be better I'm sorry this some women don't even get that by the way uh, mm -hmm. but some do and that encourages them to believe well this time he's 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 gonna make it this time he's gonna change we women are capable uh, of believing them because mm -hmm. that's our nature mm -hmm. to want to fix to want to help mm -hmm. to want things to change, right? Right. I was a nursing student, as I mentioned, so I had a heart to heal, and I, ha I feel like I'm a really nurturing person by nature, and I, I have, you know, four children today, so I love being a mom. That amazes me after God. reading the story. Yeah. I think you had one at the end of the book. I, I actually delivered Miracle Twins, biologicals, and then I foster adopted my two youngest, so I have a quiver full now. But you mentioned that, you know, this honeymoon period. So. Um, you know, I liken it to very, the very beginning of just wooing you with the most amazing amount of attention and flowers and I love you and I'll never do it again. Then it progresses, I think, to the point where even if they do uh, say they're sorry, you don't believe them. And for me, the final stage, I had no way to escape. I was threatened and told if I ever did leave that I would become a victim. They would never find the pieces. Um, he's a very scary individual, and I absolutely believe that he would kill me and probably kill my family as well if I ever tried to leave. So I felt like I had no way out um, except for murder. And that's one of the reasons people ask, why do women stay in such a situation like that? That's one of the very reasons, isn't it? They have a way of traumatizing mm -hmm. and filling a, a woman with fear uh, yes. of all kinds. It's just even like sexual abuse of a child. Mm -hmm. You tell, and right. this is what's going to happen to you, and that fear builds up, and they, they don't tell. And the same thing happened in, in your relationship, it happens in, uh, well, it's like millions of uh, women that are, uh, that experience uh, this kind of abuse or some kind of abuse in their relationships every year in America. Right. It's one in five high school girls, one in four by the time you make it to college, and women, it's one in three. So many women are keeping this covered up. They're hiding it, uh, embarrassed about it, and it's something that can't be hidden anymore and shouldn't be hidden, and I encourage women, get out, tell someone tell a counselor, tell a pastor, and if you get poor advice, get safe and leave, absolutely. Yeah. There is something about sharing it with someone mm -hmm. that can be very therapeutic and very encouraging, uh, isn't there, mm -hmm. uh, to talk to someone because they, uh, the abuser encourages isolation, mm -hmm. staying away from people and, and keeping you actually away from people so that you can't tell mm -hmm. or that no one finds out. Uh, it's a secret, isn't it? Oh, right. So not only are you threatened, I mean, you're cut off from anybody or anything and you were you know, not allowed to have relationships. I had no relationships outside of this abusive relationships because they were not good enough for me to have, so I was not allowed to have them. Tell us about the ending of your story, the happy ending. I know your father played a tremendous mm -hmm. role. They came back to the States. Right. They were gone. Right. Uh, and I'm sure that gave you encouragement mm -hmm. to do something. But I think it was the Hammer episode, yes. wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was, Dr. That, Frieda. Yes. So this, um, the night when um, this all came down, <clears throat> excuse me, he came home and was, you know, out and drinking and he had violated me that night and I was in the mat, in the guest bedroom that, that night. And so the next day I was getting ready for work and I was a very empty shell and very angry about it. And I realized as I was ready to leave that he had taken my purse. So I snuck into the master bedroom and I hoped he was in there alone because he did bring women home sometimes. I, I noticed that in the yeah. book. And, uh... So I went in to get my purse and I made a loud noise and he woke up and there was a hammer in the room. He grabbed it, coming over to crush into my skull. And I looked up at him and told, told him, go ahead and kill me. You'll never touch me another day. And I feel like God sent an amazing mass of warring angels to stand in the gap. He didn't touch me. He walked away, dropped the hammer, and I fled, never to turn around again. 
Yes, you had been praying a long time for that oh, moment, yes. hadn't you? And God came through. And I think it also shows something that women need to know. If you don't let cower under their power and their control, mm -hmm. uh, they sometimes that uh, scares them away, so mm -hmm. to speak. They, they, as long as you are under their control and don't show any. But resistance can be dangerous also, mm -hmm. oh, and trying to leave can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. It has to be planned and calculated to stay safe. Yes. So we want women to know you don't just suddenly decide mm -hmm. you're going to leave. You know right. there are plans to be made. There are uh, there's risk involved, mm -hmm. and you need help and you need support, and you, ha you did have the help and support of your family and your father especially, so we would put that message out mm -hmm. for sure to women. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us, and I encourage our viewers uh, to get this book. It is, as I've said all along, it is some more mm -hmm. story, but it's real. That's what yeah. makes uh, the difference. It is a mm -hmm. real personal story of tragedy and triumph. Yes. Uh, praise the Lord Amen. for that, right? Amen. You, you yes. have been so careful to give him the, the honor and the glory for mm -hmm. Uh, the way your story ended. And so, again, thank you. Thank you and Dr. I Freeman. do encourage you to get a copy of Jeanette's book. Uh, you will say as I that it's quite a story. And I also encourage you to join us again next week on Time for Hope. We hope that today's Time for Hope program has been helpful and inspirational to you and your family. As a token of our appreciation for joining us, we would like to offer you a one-page fact sheet which contains additional information on today's topic. Log on to our website at timeforhope.org to view and print our fact sheet. Or you can call us at 1-800-669-9133 and we will send it to you free of charge. To get a copy of today's book for a suggested donation of 14 U.S. dollars or more, which includes shipping and handling, log on to our website at timeforhope.org. You may also call us at 1-800-669-9133, or you can write us at P.O. Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. When you watch other ministry programs, you expect a request for your financial help. You might not think of Time for Hope as a ministry because it is a different kind of ministry. Being a faith-based mental health ministry means that our mission is to offer hope to hurting people by integrating practical, psychological, and biblical perspectives and truths related by persons who tell their real-life stories, professionals who share their expertise, and spiritual directors who offer the hope that can be found in a relationship with Jesus Christ and through the promises of God found in the Holy Bible. The reality is that Time for Hope is a ministry and can use your financial support as we offer hope to potentially millions of people each week. And with your financial help, when their darkness turns to light, you can know that you helped make it happen. Join us again next week when Dr. Cruz and her guests will be discussing another insightful topic. Until next time, have a great week, and remember, it is time for hope.